Hello. 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 Good evening, Coach. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, sir? Very fine. Thank you, sir. Hey. Happy inauguration. <laughs> with you, with you, with your fake Chris. Ah. <laughs> well. Um. <laughs> Uh, if you ask, okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir, clearly. Okay. Very clear. Okay, now let's go to the let's see what we have. Um, uh, tomorrow we don't have we only have major high impact news or um, by three tomorrow on USD. The non farm payroll is on. Yes, we have high impact news. This week is going to be high impact news for dollar. We have no farm on Friday and this unemployment claims on Thursday. So dollar has this week. So with that, let's go down to the chart and see what we have on the chart. So um, let's start from the weekly. Let's see what we have. We had prices on the weekly. Um, this is the NASDAQ. Or US 100. Hello? I think we're still there. Yes, yes we are here. Lot. Okay. So if you look at where price is now, price is between this point to this point. It has closed the, what would I say, the imbalance. There's a tiny one between here and here. Price has closed it. But if you notice, when price started, price gapped up. There was a gap up. So if we go down to the daily time frame, if we look to the left of where price is now, uh, this is a kind of another block. It's the last up candle before this down move, and then there's this consolidation. That's where yes, price sir. is now. That's where price is now on the daily. Then if you go down to the four mm -hmm. hour, what do we have on the four hour? Let's see what we have on the four hour, on the four hour, on the four hour. Uh, yes, you can see that price is at a kind of another block on the four hour. If you trade supply and demand, you will call this drop base drop. Yes, sir. That's where price is at the moment. So now, if we come down to where we are currently, we already know there's a gap up in price. We already know there's a gap up in price. So let me pull back all my annotation. So if we look at that gap, as long as price stays above this gap, there's a tendency it might still move higher. Because this so, so let's... Let's yeah. what is it? So the gap, sorry to ask. Um, why is the gap? Is it because of the weekend? Or yes, it's a weekend gap. Okay. It's what you will call a new week opening gap. If it's ICT, he will call it new week opening gap. You get. Once the market closes it, there is a tendency to continue in the opposite direction. But this gap, as it is, as this gap is from this point, that's this point here, is from the gap is from this point um to somewhere here let me say somewhere here so as long as price stays above this gap it will continue up but the moment price goes below this gap then you're going to see a retracement and if that retracement should, like and if that retracement should start <laughs> you'll be looking at your daily this other block here This is where you'll be looking Sorry, at no. price to find a kind of support. Hello? Ask a question, sir. Go ahead. This gap you're talking about, when do, you, when do we start focusing on the gap? Because on a normal you don't really focus on that thing on the rest. I don't understand your question. No, well, like the gap you just said, that if price stays above, if price stays above that, so mm. the, I didn't know that. Um, I I do a double can gap used to affect price or some, something. Yes, it's it's a gap now. It affects price. 
it's an is a kind of what okay. you call a this is not uh, this is not a fair value gap this is what you call a void there is nothing there there is nothing there as you can see okay. if you look at it there is nothing there there's supposed to be something there but there's nothing so if price closes it and stays above it will continue upwards but should price go below it now this gap what do i mean if price does something like this drops comes back to the gap and gets rejected it's going to go down okay do you get it? so for the nasdaq or us 100 it's still bullish but like i've pointed our price is at premium levels on the weekly daily and the four hour so there's a possibility if the bullish move is supposed to continue you wait for a retracement you can use your four hour daily range that's from 13519 to this high so what do you do you just take your um fib from this point to this point this is the equilibrium and do you notice the equilibrium is lining up with the um other block with the bullish other block so if this move up is to continue this is where you'll be looking to buy so it's like the like above the equilibrium there's a fair value gap there too mm, yes but the other block the other block has a fair value gap so price is going to come into it price is going to come into it so the next pair we are going to be looking at is dollar index the dollar index is basically still bullish it's basically still bullish but if we look at it at where price is now from the weekly time frame we can see that this is a bullish um, a bearish order block price is within it price is within this bearish order block on the weekly and let me see if I've noted the equilibrium, the 50% the of this. Let me see where the 50% is. Price is not yet at the 50%. The 50% is at 104.56. Is at 104. That's the 50% of this um, very short block. Then the next pair, where, then we'll go down to the daily. We'll go down to the daily. You look to the left. You would also notice that this is another other block, a bearish other block, and we have another bearish other block. So we can see back to back, other blocks back to back. This is what Michael will call uh, a proportion block. This is what he might call a proportion block. So price. The, <laughs> You just have to go to YouTube and check on it. Just go to YouTube, search for proportion block. You see, it. I think it's an easy. It, it is. It should be either in month four or five. Month four or five. Because this was the last up candle before this down move. This was the last up candle that came into the body of this one before dropping. So now you'll be watching the fifty percent of this candle. I think I have that marked out. If I have that, yes, I have it marked out. Uh, yes, that's where price is at now. Basically, that and this, um, the what I call the open price of this other block. Let me remove this. That's this open price now, as where price is at the moment. You can see. So, for now, the dollar index. Although still bullish, it is at premium. You don't want to be taking longs here. What you'll be waiting for is a bit of a retracement and a continuation back to the upside. So for this pair, if this pair is to retrace, you'll be watching this point here for logical longs. But for this pair, to be on the safe side with this pair, this big candle here, this big bullish candle, as long as price does not break below, can we put our mics on mute, please? As long as price does not close below this low, that's below the low of this big up close candle, it will still continue bullish. The moment you have something like this, price goes below this low, any retracement will be an opportunity 
for a lower move. So for now, the dollar index is still bullish, but it is at a premium. And if you notice, after this big candle, the momentum kind of like paused. There is no continuation, so it's suspect. So tomorrow, the possibility of seeing something like this is very high on price tomorrow. That's for the dollar One index. Second. For the dollar index, it's still bullish but we might see a correction as price is at premium. This one is the head and shoulder. And it's not the head and shoulder. It's not the head and shoulder. Mm, maybe this is the left, this is the head. So you are saying maybe the right shoulder is forming up, probably. But he's not making new lows yet. So until it starts to make new lows, we don't have a top yet. So the next pair we are going to look at is the Euro USD. So the Euro USD is still bearish. This is still bearish, but it has peaked liquidity at an area of importance. You won't see it on the weekly. You're going to see it on the daily. This level here, this low here, price has peaked liquidity between below this and this point here too. Price has peak liquidity there. Then we have this fair value gap here. We have this fair value gap here that price is sitting above. So although this pair is bearish, you do not want to be taking a long position from this point. So for this pair, your best bet is to wait for it to retrace. So your dealing range is between 1.0801 to 1.0701. So you look for the 50% of this and you look for the 50% of this. It's coming in here, as you can see. Um, before today's move, was it today's move? No, okay, this is Friday. You can see price ran up. This is the 50%. Price came very close to it and dropped. So you're waiting for price to come into this structure point here or slightly above. Then if it gives bearish evidence, then you may continue to the downside. But for now, this pair is at a place where you don't want to take a short position. The next one we're going to look at is GBPUSD. This is bearish. It's still bearish. If you look at price from the weekly, and see that it's still bearish. The weekly closed as a bearish uh, momentum candle. But on the daily, where is price now? Price is at what looks like a kind of another block, but it's what you would call a kind of a discount area. You don't want to take a short position here. So for this pair, you'll be waiting for a retracement. But the deal with this pair is that on the daily, price was efficiently delivered. As you can see on the daily, there's no fair value gap. There's no fair value gap on the daily. So if we go to the four hour and put in our notations, we'll be looking for where price. So we'll be looking at this point here. You see if price will retrace up to here. You can see there's a fair value gap here on the four hour. That's the only one that is still left open. And if price retraces up to this area and there's a bearish evidence, then we can see price come back down. But for now, this pair, as you can see, is not making new lows. Is not making new lows. The lows are pointing up, which points to the fact that this pair may still rally. So going into the new week, probably tomorrow till Thursday, you might see a bullish correction on this pair before a continuation to the downside. So the next we are going to look at is gold. Somebody was telling me something that gold has gotten to 170. I had to look at another broker and voila, this is what we have on gold. This shouldn't come as a surprise. Why shouldn't it come as a surprise? Now let's go to gold on the normal, on um, the intraday charts of gold. So if we look at gold now, this is where gold is on the weekly. And we have this swing low here. Let me remove all this, my uh, alert so that I can see price clearly. So if we look at gold, gold is bearish as you can see it's bearish on the weekly not much 
aware prices on the weekly. But if we go to the daily, we can see that this low here, price is very close to it. But there's one thing I've noticed with gold. Sometimes the bodies, that's what they call the rejection block, can act as a, turn, a turning point for price before the swing low. And you can already see that that is already happening. That's already happening. Then uh, the fair value gap, price has not touched it yet. It's still some distance from it. So this is bearish, but we might see a correction before a continuation back to the downside. So if we go down to the four hour already, as you can see, it has already happened. Price is almost at 170. Price is somewhere here. Price is somewhere here. And if I pull back my notations, the dealing range on the four on the one hour, that's the dealing range of price, is between 185.33 to uh, 1985.33 to 1936.85. If you use your fee to look for the equilibrium, this is where price is now. Price is somewhere here. Price is way above equilibrium at premium. So since this is still bearish, you'll be waiting for a bearish evidence here to short. Because if you if we go back to the broker that has that heavy move, uh, if we go back to the broker that has that heavy move, you see that this is a one-way move. There's a possibility this might retrace a bit before going back up. Although this is still um, bearish, but we are looking at a corrective move now. So on this pair, longs might be safe for now. Until price probably gets up to this point here, yeah, then we'll be able to decide. So for gold, gold is bearish, but we are in a corrective move at the moment. The next we are going to look at is Euro GBP. Euro GBP is everywhere and nowhere. This pair is basically in a very, very ugly consolidation. Very, very ugly consolidation. As you can see it on the weekly, doji candles, doji bodies. And if you look at it on the daily, it becomes very, very clear. You can see price is basically sitting between 87.34, although they broke this low. So we can say that for now, this is where price is sitting, between 87.10 and 86.49. As you can see, these, four, these three candles are within the body of this candle. So you can see that price is in a consolidation. So for this pair, you can just play the ranges. That's just, you'll be safer playing the ranges. So if we go down to the four hour time frame, there's going to be liquidity down here. So if price comes down here, sweeps here and turns, then you can buy and target any of this internal liquidity. But for now, this pair is in an ugly consolidation. Then the next we're going to look at is GBPCHF. The same thing too with GBPCHF, an ugly consolidation. Let's look at it from the weekly. If we look at it from the weekly, you can see it very clearly. It's not going anywhere it's just back and forth if we go down to the daily let's see if we can find a range candle on the daily uh if you look at it basically on the daily this is the range candle although the high has been taken out so we can say that price is just within this point to this point that's where we can see that price is let me remove the others so we can say that price is between 1.1278 to 1.1132. So that's the range on price. Then the next thing we're going to look at is the yen basket. We we'll use the yen basket to check the directional bias of the yen against the other currency. So if we look at this pair, the yen is bearish for now. It's bearish for now and it has closed. It's like it has almost closed up its weekly fair value gap. Let me see. It seems it has closed up the weekly fair value gap. Yes, it hit it today. And it has closed back into the weekly range. So that tells us that we might see a bullish run on this pair going into the new week. Although 
he's bearish, but we might see a bullish one. Because there's one thing I found out that once price sweeps a low and goes back into the range, it will continue in the direction. It will continue back into the body of that range until something displaces it internally. So if we look at this, we might see a run up to any of these highs. So let's go down to the far time frame. If we go down to the far time frame, we can see that this is the dealing range between this high to this low. So if we look at this, for the four hour, if this low holds, you wait for something like this. So this is what we have on the yen basket. There's a possibility that we might see a rally on this yen, corrective move, not a reversal, a corrective move into this new, going into the new week. So with that idea, if we go into the major yen pairs like GBP, pound yen, they are, this is, they are all basically very bullish. They are all basically very, very, very bullish. And if, as you can also see, this has gone above the previous week's high. Let me remove all my. It has gone above the previous week's high and closed and is back inside the range. That points to the fact that this, all this major move, all this big major move, we might see a little bit of a retracement into it. So if you go down to the four hour time frame, this will be your dealing range 171.23 to this high at 174. So if you pick your 50%, your 50% is going to come in somewhere here. And if you notice, there's a bullish order block at that 50%. So if this is going to continue higher, this would be a good place to take a long position. The next pair we're going to look at is the Euro Yen. The Euro Yen too is still bullish. It's still bullish, but he has highs to his left, unlike the other pairs. And why is that? Because the Euro GBP is dragging this pair. The Euro GBP is weighing on it. So it's not running as fast as the others. The Euro GBP is dragging it. So, and if you notice, it has gone back above the previous week and dropped. So we might see a little bit of a retracement before a continuation back to the upside. So for this pair, it may come down to this place, 149.80, before going back up. So if we go down to the daily, where's 149.80? That comes in here. As you can see, there's another block there. There's another block there. So if we go down to the four-hour time frame, 148.84 to this high at 151.08 is your dealing range. So you'll be waiting for price. There's another block here and this. Either of this level, if price comes in there, then you look for bullish evidence to continue to the upside. Is there any question? Is there any question or any pair anybody will want me to look at before we? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yes, sir. I don't trade this coin, but let me just look at it. Let's see BTC. BTC, 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 BTC. I did some analysis before. That's why I have all this on my chart. Let me remove all of them so I can basically see what I have on this chart. So let me start from the weekly. I start from the weekly. Mm. There's a possibility it might run up. Looking at it from the weekly, we have this loop to this high. So this is what you would call like a change in character. That tells you that the downside is not so interesting now. There's a possibility they might continue to the upside. So if we go down to the daily, what do we have on the daily? We already have a change of character here. Very, very clear on the daily. And price didn't make a new low. So that means that there's a possibility this may come up towards this area. It's a possibility to come up towards this area. Then if we go down to the four hour time frame, 
Well, this is your dealing range 25, 84, 6 point. This price to this point here. So, this is your four hour dealing range. So, you pick from this low to this high. And if you notice, what do you see are the 50%? Hello, first person that asked for Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. eh? That's another other block. That's another, another block. block. And, and this other block, why is this other block important? Hmm? Do you know why this other block is important? No, no, sir. Let's go. Eh? You were saying something. Hello. You were saying something. Why is this other block important? This other block was used to take out this high and take out this high. So if you're going to be buying Bitcoin, wait for them here. And then if it starts to run, you can see this FIB level lines up with 29,850. So if it starts to run, this will be your first take profit. The next take profit is going to be 31 if it starts to run. So any other question before we call it a night? So in the absence of any other question, I think we're going to end this meeting for now. I wish everybody a beautiful night's sleep and a blessed trading week ahead. Good night, everybody. Good night,